This is the second in a series of videos exploring arrays in Delphi. In this video we will learn how to loop through the elements of an array. Last time we started a new project that stores month names in an array. The user must pick a month from the array by selecting a month number from the spin edit. Today I will show you how to loop through the array to show all 12 months in this list box. You will use a conditional statement in a loop to retrieve the winter months from the array. The hunting season is during those months. Hi, it's Gerard here from Land Delphi. I'm a trainer in programming languages and in this series I help you to understand Delphi programming step by step and line by line. If this video is helpful to you, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And I also publish all the links I mention in this video in the description box below. In all our lessons I start with the code immediately. I do not demonstrate how to create the graphical user interface. That is so that you only focus on the code of the lesson we are doing. If you save the project we programmed last time, you can go ahead and open it. But if you are new here and you want to follow what I am doing, but you want to save some time, you can download the graphical user interface. To start immediately where I start with this lesson. The start and solution project files are available for download from my Patreon page at patreon.com slash learndelphi. I also posted that link in the description. And I'm using Delphi 10.3 Community Edition to demonstrate these lessons. There's also a link in the description if you want to download the free copy of Delphi. You can pause the video here and go and do the downloads. Here I have the project open in Delphi. If you have your project open, let's jump into it. Here's how it looks. Today we will program these two buttons. But let's first run the program to see what we did last time. The spin edit's default value when the form is created is 1. And the panel shows January as the first month. Select another number in the spin edit. Month 2 is February, month 3 is March, and so on. We stored the month names in an array of strings. The array has 12 elements, with indices from 1 to 12. So this spin edit picks out the specific element by referencing the element's index, with an index that matches the number in the spin edit. We want to reuse the array in the click event handlers of these two buttons. When you click this button, a loop must retrieve all the elements in the same array and display them in this list box. And when you click this button, another loop must only pick out the hunting months from the array and display them in this list box. Close the form. Double click the first button. Let's look at this event handler that handles the forms on create event. When the form is created, we set the initial value of the spin edit to 1. This statement will then trigger the on change event of the spin edit that we programmed here. The spin edit's on change event handler executes every time the value in the spin edit changes. Here we declared an array with 12 elements of type string. We also have an integer that stores the number selected in the spin edit. Here we populate the array by assigning month names to each element, from month 1 to month 12. This statement assigns the value selected in the spin edit to int month number. Then we read the value from the spin edit that is now stored in int month number, and use that number to pick out an element from the array that has a corresponding index. Then we assign the result to the caption of the panel. The two buttons that must fill the list boxes must also use this array. Currently the array is only accessible to the code in this event handler, because we declared it only for this event handler. Delete the array declaration here. Go under the implementation clause. We will declare the array here. Type var. Press enter. Type IRR months as array 1 to 12 of string. Now the array will exist before the form is instantiated in memory. Then when the form's on create event is triggered, the spin edit's value will change to 1. That will in turn trigger the on change event of the spin edit, where the array is populated. Let's make sure it still works. Run the project. The spin edit's value is 1 when the form starts up. The month name still display in the panel. And index 1 is picked out of the array and January is shown in the panel. And when you select different numbers, different months are picked out of the array. Let's code the buttons now. Close the form. Click the design tab. Double click all months. This event handler handles the on click event of BT in all months. Go above begin, type var, enter and type int month number as integer. 
This integer will be used to cycle through a for loop. Go under begin and type lsd all months dot clear. As usual, we always start with a blank list box, so we clear it. Make a new line and type for int month number colon equals 1 to 12. The loop must cycle 12 times to pick out the 12 elements of the array. Go on to the next line and type begin, press enter, and type the statement between begin and end. Every time the for loop enters a new cycle, the next number is assigned to int month number. And here we read the number in int month number. And we use it to pick out the element in the array with the same index. Then we add the month name contained in the element to the items of the list box. Run the project. Make sure everything still works as before. Now click the button. All the month names are listed in the list box. Close the form. Click the Design tab. Double click the button that must list the hunting months. Now here we will do something a little different. Instead of cycling with integers, we will use a for in loop to cycle through the array. An array is like one big variable that contains many data items at the same time. Arrays keep track of the number of data items internally, so we can only tell the loop to keep picking elements out of the array as long as there is more elements, starting from the first element until all the elements are found. We can accomplish that with a for in loop. Each time the loop enters a new cycle, the next element's value must be retrieved and stored in a normal string variable. So go above begin, type var, and declare a string variable named str hunting month. Go under Begin and clear the list box named LSD Hunting Months. Make a new line and type 4. Remove all these placeholders and type STR Hunting Month in ARR Months. Now we cycle through all the elements in the array, and as the loop returns to the top, it puts the next element's value in the string variable called STR Hunting Month. So here it is like saying for each single month in the array of months. Go to the next line and type begin. Now let me explain what the criteria for a hunting month is. In the southern hemisphere, hunting is only legal in winter months. Those months do not have the letter R in their names. All the months have the letter R except May, June, July and August. So we must only pick out those four months when the loop cycles through the elements of the array. In an earlier lesson you learned that the string is also an array. It contains an array of characters, and each character also has an index. So we can also loop through the characters in a string to determine if the letter R is contained in the string. But Delphi has an easier way to find the occurrence of a specific character. Let me show you. Type this statement. The string has a contains method. A method is like a procedure or a function that is built into a variable or an object. In this case, the contains method belongs to the string variable called str hunting month. It has an input parameter that requires a char. Here we pass the letter r to the contains method. So this if statement evaluates if the value in str hunting month does not contain the letter r. And if it doesn't contain r, it must use it. Go to the next line and type begin. Press enter again and type this statement. If the name of a month doesn't contain the letter R, we add it to the items of the list box called LST Hunting Months. Run the program. Click Hunting Season. The list box displays May, June, July and August. Let me show you something else about the arrays. Close the form. Go to the code where you declared the array. It is here under the implementation clause. Here we declared the array with var. Although the calendar as we know it starts from January, it used to start in March in ancient times. So there used to be only 10 months in a year. And that is evident in the word October. The name October comes from the Latin word octo, meaning 8. So October used to be month 8, but the Romans changed the calendar in 153 BCE to start with January. So now we have 12 months. 
Now that the modern calendar is more accurate, it is unlikely to change in the future. So we can declare this array as a constant. So let's change this declaration to a constant. Then go behind the declaration and before the line terminator assign the month names to the array, like this. Notice we assign the month names with an equal symbol and we type it between brackets. Now the array is immediately populated when it is declared. Each month name will become an element with an index in the array. January gets index 1, February index 2, March 3 and so on. Scroll down to the spin edits change event handler. We don't need these assignments anymore. Select it and delete it. Run the program. Select numbers from the spin editor to test if it still works. That was fun. Close the form and save the project. When we created the math application in lessons 15.1 to 15.3, we only use a plus operator, but I promise that we will return to the project and add an array of all the mathematical operators to complete the project. The program must then randomize the elements in the array to display the random mathematical operators. You can now go back to those lessons and try it in the meantime. I will show you the solution next time. If you had fun, please leave a comment. And if you learned something new, please like, subscribe and share my lessons with your friends. Thank you for watching and a special thank you to my supporters on Patreon.com. Happy coding! See you next time!